All right. Hi, Karen. Hey, Sharifa. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah, so we are doing this uh, pre-recorded thing because our schedules don't match at all, unfortunately. But, you know, nonetheless, technology has helped us. <laughs> yes, that's true. Okay, maybe uh, for a start, you want to introduce yourself first? Sure. So my name is Karen. I'm actually the, uh, the founder of KarenLee.Fitness. So I run a mobile fitness business, which means that I travel to clients' homes to train them. And uh, if they have a, if, if they live in a condo, I train them in the gym. Um, if not, like outdoors or even in the comfort of the living room. So my services include personal training, nutritional coaching, right, um, as well as the latest, uh, which is health and wellness coaching, um, predominantly in the mental well-being space, um, brain health space, um, anything that's within the health and wellness domain. Um, that's what I do, yeah, because I'm actually um, taking a graduate diploma in positive psychology, and I just oh, wow. love it. <laughs> yeah, and it's definitely benefiting a lot of my clients in terms of, um, you know, like, overall well-being, right, in that space. Um, yeah, so I would love to share more later, but so these are my services as of now. Yes, you know, I was thinking to myself, you know, um, I want to take... Um, a degree but I don't want to take a degree in like business or finance or whatever that big names those big names right because it doesn't relate to what I do right I mean mm. if I want to learn about business I'm already running a business right so then I was thinking yeah maybe yeah you're right you know you take something which is related and will benefit your clients so that's the key right yeah, education <laughs> so okay <laughs> so we're going to talk about women because uh, predominantly all my clients are women except for mm -hmm. those men who want to buy the organic products from me that's about it but the services are generally by and large for women right for obvious yes. reasons so um so i have some questions for you laid out so um these are specific specifically for women so the first question is uh, so what are the critical factors of a woman uh, who needs to look out for themselves like what uh, what do they what do they need to look out for when they, they know that okay uh, because I have a headache and I need this you know uh, because I have a tummy so I need this so what are the things that they need to look out for to even uh, think of starting to go into fitness Hmm. So that's a very good question. Importantly, right, um, I don't want to segregate, right, but for me, for women, a lot of the times it's really about um, sleep, right, because as mothers, right, I mean, you guys tend to lose your sleep when you take care of the younger ones. So for me, right, there are five factors. One is sleep. Second is physical activity. I'm going to expand that later on as I, as I tell you what they are. Third is brain hygiene was known as mental well-being, right? And then fourth is nutrition. And the last one is stress management, right? So a lot of the times the sleep and stress management will come together, right? So when I talk about sleep, right, it's really about like how many hours of sleep are you getting, right? Are you getting quality sleep or just quantity sleep, right? You know, and then what is your nighttime routine like, right? And then do you feel refreshed in the morning? Because a lot of times when... When women, or rather when all of us, we wake up, we don't really feel refreshed. And then when we don't feel refreshed, right, we don't have the motivation to exercise, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. We, so, it's like a, so it's like a domino effect. When we don't have the motivation to exercise, it really mm -hmm. affects our, um, you know, the emotions, our image, right? Sense. Yeah, correct. You know, and then we feel, we feel despondent. Right, because we feel that oh, when I'm when I'm going to start my exercise, when I'm going to start this weight management, right? Um, it's always tomorrow, journey. right? Uh, tomorrow, yeah. next week, next month. <laughs> yeah, correct. There's always this procrastination, and this applies to I mean, both men and women, but usually women they feel uh, more emotional in that sense, right? They feel mm -hmm. that they have to do it, but just that they can't bring themselves to do it, right? Yeah. So then. Brain hygiene is the other one, right? So brain hygiene scientifically is known to really ensure that your mind, your brain, your nerves are healthy, mm -hmm. right? So that you don't actually get into the state where you are suffering from cognitive or neurodegenerative decline, mm -hmm. right? 
and you hear you hear that very common nowadays Alzheimer's yes, very, dementia very. right depression yes. yeah so all this is part I, of brain I read, hygiene I read something that um, nutrition also affects the development of the brain right yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I'm going to that point, like the fourth point is nutrition exactly, right? Mm-hmm. So what you eat is basically what you feel and what you think, right? Mm-hmm. So like, for example, if you put a lot of sugar, mm-hmm. right, processed food into your body, yes. right? Foods that don't actually love you back. And what I meant is that, you know, when you when you have a relationship with your husband, your partner, or your wife. Yeah, you I have a relationship to... with desserts. <laughs> <laughs> A love relationship. Yeah, that's great, right? Yeah, but <laughs> is it a healthy relationship? Right, that's always the question, right? Yes. What does that mean? Does it mean that the dessert actually loves you back? So if the dessert loves you back, right, then it shouldn't be giving you diabetes. It should not be giving you right chronic illnesses, right? If you yeah. have a healthy relationship with your foods. That's what I meant by reciprocal, right? That like kind of love relationship. Because it's like in a normal human relationship, right? You want a person to love you back. Yeah. So I actually heard this from Dr. Daniel Amen's podcast. Mm-hmm. Like he mm-hmm. is a renowned psychiatrist who does mm-hmm. brain imaging. So he talked mm-hmm. about this a lot. When you eat something, right? Like for example, you put a lot of sugar in your body, yes. your brain can get into a malfunction state, yeah. right? Yeah. And that actually allows you to feel lethargic. Mm-hmm. And you are craving for more instead right. of stopping, right? Because the brain is the most powerful yet the most complex organ in the human body, right? Oh, the right. brain determines everything, right? Determines our movement, yes, it's the way the we brain. Speak. Yeah, exactly. And it moves your limbs. <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah, so it's like brain dead. So if your brain is dead, you're literally dead. Right, so I said brain hygiene is very, very important. Then, of course, right, is stress management. Right? Mm-hmm. So, how do you, how are you managing your stress? Right, how are you? What are your strategies in coping your stress level? Right, because there's good stress and there's bad stress. Right, but stress how, is how stress. <laughs> Stress is stress, I find. Yeah, because once stress, like uh, most people, right, they go into yeah. this indulgence, right. Yeah, so it's similar to cravings, right? So it's like when you mm-hmm. have a certain craving or when you feel like low or down, you binge your comfort food, right? To make you feel better. Yeah. But it's all part of the brain. It's really your brain that processes that, right? So because our brains are very smart, right? But the body doesn't really know what the body is doing. It's right? just doing it, right? Correct, you're just doing it. <laughs> so unless there's really a connection between the brain and the body, right? And then mm-hmm. you are actually being mindful. Which is another powerful buzzword nowadays, mindfulness, right? Yeah. Resilience. Yeah. So all this is part of really how are you managing your life? Now the last one I forgot to mention is actually inner tranquility, which oh, wow. is yeah, which is known as an individual's disposition, right? It's your mm-hmm. state of peace and calm or quietness, right? Mm-hmm. That means how are your inner um, this position be influenced by the internal and external factors, mm-hmm. right? For example, like at home, are you getting any peace, right? Like, are you, do you have a relationship, a good relationship with your family? Or are you living in a, you know, in a household where there's a lot of constant negativity? Violence? You know? Yeah, right, exactly. Arguments, right? Domestic violence, right? Then when you leave the house with your friends, are you, do you have good friends or good company of mm-hmm. friends that really support you right, with whatever that you do? Or do you have friends who are just giving you a negative influence? Mm. So basically, yeah. um, fitness is not only about the physical form, it's also mental and your entire lifestyle, right? I would, I would categorize that as, uh, or rather I would define that as well-being. Right. Mm. So well being, yeah. So well being is really, you know, like your overall uh, balance, right? Mm. Which actually defines your emotional, Mm -hmm. social, physical, Mm -hmm. right? And mental. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So fitness is just, fitness in a nutshell is really movement, exercising, Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Right. Yeah. And then you have like wellness, well-being, right? All this different terminology. But importantly, right, when you talk about your lifestyle, it's really holistic. True, very true. Um, now, fitness is the buzzword. So, like, mm. uh, they, they use it uh, in terms of, uh, no, instead of using well-being. So, so I've been reading up before I, <laughs> I interview you. So, say, oh, mental yes. fitness, uh, physical fitness, which we always hear yes. from young, right? And then we have uh, emotional fitness. So, uh, and then we have yes. the financial fitness, which causes stress as well. <laughs> so, I think, yeah. yes, you're right. Uh, it's an entire holistic thing that we need to look at. Um, and, of course, as a coach, it is great that you can touch on uh, different aspects of their lives so that it will mm. cohesively work. Like yesterday I was talking to someone uh, So she was saying that Oh some people are difficult to motivate Because they have all these other stresses in their lives Which she cannot help So I guess it's, uh, it's really good that You touch base on other aspects of their lives So that you can help them to push for their target goal Which is maybe to lose weight Or to be a bit stronger, healthier, more agile in their life You know, So it's good yeah. So my next question is Um uh, after they know that, okay, this is what they want to do and uh, what you suggest them to do, right? So how do they mm. start? Because I know um, I started this, um, you know, exercising and living a better life, eating healthier like seven years ago. So I started the first three months, I told myself, okay, let's do this. So it was because I've got this one year membership. In a, in a women's uh, I won I won a lucky draw <laughs> One year oh, membership nice. In a women's gym Which is right behind my salon So it's like I can't have no excuses mm, At all right Right But so <laughs> then uh, I gave myself three months So I exercised Like almost every day You know uh, it was fun because I had a mixture of stuff. And mm. then, um, of course, uh, you know, a lot of attraction, right? I met uh, nutritionists and dietitian friends. Yeah. So they kind of give me some tips on how to eat healthier. But I think that's mm. the hardest. So that was how I started. So what would you suggest to someone who thinks that they want to be physically, mentally, and emotionally fit, but they don't know where to start or how to start or procrastinate to start? Yeah, so, so with you, right, you were enticed because you won the lucky draw, right? Yes. <laughs> and the gym membership was a free gift. Moreover, mm -hmm. it was just behind a salon. So that is perfect in a way, like it's, you know, like it's God-given gift in that sense, right? So for women who already have that contemplation, that means they are actually ready, but just that they have not decided, or rather they want to, but they just procrastinate, right? So I would suggest that they understand their why, Right? Why do you want to exercise? Why do you need to stay fit? Why do you need to get into a healthy state? Right? Ask a question, why? So when you understand your why, right, and then you start small. Right? And because our behavior right, is determined by our habits. Mm -hmm. We humans are creatures of habits, right? Right? <laughs> yes. and routine, right? So just that it takes 20 years, right, or more to develop our adult personalities, right? We are also developing behavior and habits. They will stay with us, right, for a lifetime. Unfortunately, some of these behaviors, right, and habits are not always healthy or helpful to us, right? So if you, if you are looking honestly uh, or seriously, rather, right, to start and you don't know how and where hire a personal trainer a certified personal trainer right um, or a certified health and wellness coach somebody who knows what he or she is talking about right and that and that you know that your why and you know that your goal tell this to this person right and this person right will be able to walk with you so for me, right, I'm not just a personal trainer, but I'm a coach. And a coach, right, it means that it's somebody, right, who empowers and co-collaborates with you to build the life you want to have, right? So which means you are the expert of your life. I don't tell you what to do. I will give you the guidance, right, and the motivation, right? And together, you and I will find solutions to overcome the obstacles in your life, be it physical, mentally, 
socially and emotionally, right? Yeah, so this is the reason why, you know, like me as a health and wellness coach has to be very descriptive because people tend to misunderstand that coach is like a sports coach, right? I'm not a sports coach, right? Like I, I mean, like we do coaching cues and whatnot, but as a coach, we sit down, right? It's a theoretical session, right? And then I basically ask you questions to really challenge you to get out of your comfort zone. You know, like how a life coach, an executive coach, business coach does? Yeah, yes. so that's what I do in the health and wellness domain. So you kind of yeah. give so, them a nudge and a push every time, right? I think it's, uh, it's more than that. But initially, right, it's really about empowering them to think of their own answers and to get them to have the aha moment. Oh, wow. Okay, so I see. So this is something that I have to do. Right, so it's like basically um, allowing them to think about okay, so getting a movement in is not about exercising because a movement, right, is big. That, that's yeah. movement. This mm-hmm. is exercise, and people mm-hmm. are afraid of the word exercise. A lot of women are like most of my clients who came to me, right? Like they always say, you know what, <laughs> I really hate to exercise, but I don't have a choice. <laughs> and I and I'll say to them, right, you don't have to hate the exercise. Right, but because you move, right, except when you sleep and mm-hmm. and sit, right? I mean you still move your upper body. Yes. But yes. if you think about movement, right, you can think about taking an opportunity by climbing the stairs uh-huh. versus taking the lift. Right? Yes. Yeah, like you see in the train station in MRT, right? You see everybody right will like huddle to take the <laughs> escalator and then you see like one or two person taking the lift or taking the stairs. Yes, yes. Right? So you could be that person, the third person taking the stairs, right? Mm-hmm. So when you see an opportunity, you grab it and then you start to move. And that is already a very big step. Beginning um, th- that goes into my second, qu- uh, third question. So mm. um, how to make it easy for someone who never exercise or has n- no long gone you know the years of exercise like some of my customers say oh you know i used to be so active when i was in school i was slim and then now after i give birth or after i turn 30 i start to blow up, (laughs) and then now to start is so difficult right so like um uh, I know that once you start a routine, you kind of yeah. like crave for it. Just like you, you said sugar, right? So I crave for exercise. Like my body crave for exercise. I'll get so cranky if I don't do it at least once or twice a week. So how do you get someone who's like super laid back already to like consistently do it, not like do it once a month, you know? Yeah, so the same thing, right? It's start forming habits, right? So there's this book called The Power of a Habit by mm-hmm. Charles Duhigg. So he mm-hmm. talked about, you know, he talked about a cue, which is a trigger, mm-hmm. right? A ritual, which is mm-hmm. the routine and a reward, right? Because our brains is really smart. So when the brain right, gets into this habit formation, every time a new habit is formed, new neural pathways are formed. Mm-hmm. So when that happens, right? You know, we basically recognize that, okay, you know, this is a, a new habit. We just have to get into the consistency of the habit, right? Yes. And then it becomes automatic, mm-hmm. right? So habits are basically automatic behavior that have been wired into our brains, right? Through what? Through repetition, mm-hmm. right? Through, through repetition. And as days pass, we do it less consciously, mm-hmm. right? So according to neuroscientists, right? They found that there's a part of our brain, right? That's called the basal ganglia, which mm-hmm. is crucial for habit forming. Ah. That's what it is. Right, it's already a brain structure called the basal ganglia that is, mm-hmm. you know, like its function, right, is for habit forming. Mm-hmm. And, and when you start a new habit, right, and then you do it consistently, right, and then it actually becomes a habit which is, which is automatic. Like I mentioned right earlier, habits can be good mm-hmm. and bad, right, and that is determined by your behavior, or your behavior is determined by your habits, mm-hmm. right. Yeah, like before, before, like you mentioned, before a woman gets pregnant, like she used to run, you know, went go to the gym and whatnot. But after pregnancy, it changes. Why? Because the routine, right, is changed while she's pregnant. 
right? Mm -hmm. It just ran 180, right, mm -hmm. degree. And then so after she's pregnant, she's given birth, and this is when she would have to start resuming slowly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's all about, you know, understanding this process of habit formation. Ah, okay. So um, same thing, like you just have to uh, find uh, why you want to do it and then after that mm. you start on it and then try to keep it up and keep it up so until it forms a, a habit, right? Yeah, because like earlier, right, you mentioned that you, your, your dessert is your relationship, <laughs> yes. right? Yeah, uh -huh. so when you, when you have your favorite piece of dessert, right, how, how did you feel after that? How oh, very feel? happy, very satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> right, and that is your reward, right? Your instant gratification, right? Because you feel yes. so happy, you feel so comforted. Right, yes. so it's the same thing, right? All habits, right, are, uh, are processed through mm -hmm. stages, right, mm -hmm. in the same order, which is cue, craving, response, and reward, right? Uh, so yeah. this, this four-step pattern, right, is really the backbone of every habit, right? Mm -hmm. So every time, right, our, our brain will go through this same order each time. It's already been wired. Right. So right. when you when you feel that you, when the when the trigger comes, the trigger mm -hmm. is what well, trigger is. Okay, I am upset. Mm -hmm. I'm stressed. Mm -hmm. Right. I need something to comfort me now. I need my chocolate deal, for example. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So so this cue right triggers your brain to initiate a behavior. Mm. So when you feel stress, you need your chocolate deal. Okay, for example, to make you feel good. So every time when you when the brain recognizes this, your behavior is eating the chocolate yo. Mm -hmm. Similarly, your donut, your chocolate, your dessert, right? Mm -hmm. So if we were to break that pattern by swapping your chocolate yo or your dessert with apple, fruits mm -hmm. that are sweet. Because mm -hmm. ultimately, right, it's just a sweetness on your palate. Yes, that that's gives right. you that instant gratification, right? So if you can, yeah. So if you can cheat your brain by swapping with something, right, that is sweet but healthier version, it becomes a new habit. You're absolutely right. You know, because so like yesterday, it reminds me of what happened yesterday. So um, after every meal, I would want a dessert, right? So my mom said, "Hey, there's fruits in the fridge. Why don't you help yourself?" So I took up like a whole bunch of yeah. fruits. Yeah. Thinking that I'm like in this craze, uh, you know, emotional state of mind that I need something sweet. So I started eating yeah. all the fruits. And then halfway through, like, oh my God, I'm so full because I'm, I'm so filled with fiber already. <laughs> and then I started to put the stuff back into the fridge. My mom said, what happened? Uh, I don't want it anymore. <laughs> so you're right. It's just the taste of the sweetness that I wanted, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah it solves so the problem. Yeah, and once you've done that, right, it already builds consistency. And then what happens after that? You see results, right? You not only feel good, but it doesn't give you the extra unhealthy calories on your body, right? And then you feel that, okay, you know what? Yay. So now I see that I will want to continue eating fruits, right? Yeah, so this habit formation reinforces the loop of success over a period of time, mm -hmm. right, which builds consistency, and as a result, transformation will begin. So, okay. So, yeah. talking about women, so after birth, everything. So, now they grow older, right? Uh, maybe right. in uh, uh, late 40s, 50s. So, most women will tell me, oh, you know, I'm old already. I should uh, slow down, blah, 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 and all that. And I even um, recognize this feeling in myself. Like, after yeah. I hit 40, right? Then yeah. I realized that I enjoy things like yin yoga. So mm. during the circuit breaker, I actually formed this habit of doing yin yoga and doing a lot of breath work. And guess what? I lost weight just by doing it consistently for the two and a half wow. months I was at home. So then, okay. I, but of course, I didn't know this fact, right? 
So uh, because I was like, okay, I've been doing Zumba and all the gym and all that all these months, right? So it's great. Mm. I'm strong and everything. So I thought, okay, let's try something new. And then I chanced upon this yin yoga on um, on Instagram and then yeah. they offered a free class. So I said, okay, let's try. So I tried it and then I looked for a, a paid class, which I feel is better. Like you said, when you, um, you find a certified coach and a coach that will really help you, it's much better. You know, then they can tell you, oh, the position is wrong. You need to do this. You need to breathe deeper, whatever. So I did that and I actually lost weight. So maybe you can touch upon that and also like, uh, is it true that as we grow older we we, mm-hmm. we are generally weaker yeah yeah uh, so so again right like you have formed a new habit right so your new habit is switching from putting stress so exercising can also put a lot of stress right mm-hmm. negative stress on the body if you do a lot of high intensity a lot of cardio a lot of aerobic activity not that they are bad but just that you know they can actually be very um impactful so what mm-hmm. you did, right, was you actually changed. You went into a non-impactful uh, mode, and that mm-hmm. is breathing, right? Because breathing is actually very powerful. Breathing can actually help with weight loss, and especially mm-hmm. when you are allowing your limbic system, right, to, to function. Mm-hmm. Because breathing, again, right, it all takes our diaphragm, and it's, it's about breathing correctly, not breathing from the chest, but diaphragmatic breathing, yes. right? deep breathing exercises in fact studies have shown right don't quote me on this but studies have shown that breathing can actually help with a lot of cancer patients Mm. yeah and even irritable bowel syndrome so if you have ibs or you have constipation problem or gut health problem breathing is actually very powerful so answering your second question um yes Mm. true as we age for sure right our our bones can get weaker and this is actually a known condition called uh, sarcopenia mm-hmm. sarcopenia right is basically a condition right whereby our muscle mass actually decreases over a mm-hmm. period of time right so our bone mass bone density actually decreases right because mm-hmm. as we age right our muscles become or rather our bone density right is being diminished mm-hmm. yeah so so this is actually a known condition especially right when we hit 40 years of age and it starts to decline right over a period of time right it could be until 75 or even until 80 so exercising is definitely one way right to improve that you know when you are when you are start when you, you even even right now right it doesn't have to be later on but i think it's important to exercise at a young age right and do more strength training functional training yeah versus cardio not that cardio is bad because we also want to ensure that we have good cardio health right good heart health yeah so according to national activity guidelines right um the optimal to get into an optimal uh, life or healthy well-being right is you have between 150 and 300 minutes of aerobic activity Mm-hmm. plus two to three strength training sessions a week. Mm. Yeah, to get into that optimum well-being. And this is by the National Activity Guidelines in this nation. Yeah, so you can go, you can check it out, right? And aerobic activity is like what? It's like swimming, right? Jogging, aerobics, yes. right? Your aqua aerobics, or even like, um, even like a simple sport. Mm-hmm. right like tennis and, and etc so those are aerobic activity that actually allow you right to improve your cardiovascular mm-hmm. right but importantly it's about doing strength training yeah okay good all right mm-hmm. so um last but not the least so um after all these, I'm sure um, a lot of the viewers have an idea of how they can start and where they can start. So if let's say um, you can offer them something uh, to start off with, like what do you have for them? So currently, right, I've actually promoting my 27-day Move Smart program, mm-hmm. right? And basically it is four different types of exercises, mm-hmm. right? or rather four different genres of exercises. I've got mobility, I've got cardio, I've got strength and I've got mm-hmm. abdominal work, 
Mm -hmm. right it's less than half an hour mm -hmm. right it's four simple exercises and mm -hmm. it's basically not real time but follow what karen does right mm -hmm. yeah and it's a 27 day which you you can do consecutively or not it's up to your right your availability and convenience that's one right it's an online program mm -hmm. secondly uh it's my services right so what i do is my bread and butter so i um, we give you a complimentary consultation, mm -hmm. right? I will look at, um, <clears throat> I'll conduct a dysfunction movement screening. That means I will look at the biomechanical area yes. of your body, how your body moves, whether, you know, you can uh, walk properly, skip, crawl, jump, right? The, the basic primal moves, right? To see whether or not you have any dysfunction in your limb. Of course, your and then your medical condition, if any, right? Talk about that, right? And then again, start small, something that's manageable for you, because I don't want to be giving like a newbie high intensity interval training, which is a big no no, right? For the yes. for the, the big of the for starters. Mm -hmm. So that's that. So it could be like a month, it could be three months, it could be a six month, right? Training. Uh, and then for individuals who are really fit, but they want to get fitter, right? Mm -hmm. So then it talks about, again, um, what, what are you not currently doing, mm -hmm. right? And how can we actually leverage or how can we add more into your current routine? So if the individual wants to improve muscular endurance, right, there will be a lot of stamina work, right? Mm -hmm also strength work mm. Mm -hmm. so if the person wants to run for a marathon train for a marathon right it's best to hire a running coach because right? i'm not a my my forte is not running yeah so it, it's really very specific knowing yes. what your specific goals are yes. right if you just want an overall improvement in your current lifestyle right i'll be more than happy to assist you but if you have a specific goal, like for example, you want to lift 300 pounds. Okay, that's not me. Because again, it's not my forte. <laughs> yeah. You're not like, the uh, heavyweight champion coach. <laughs> no, correct. Yeah. yeah. So importantly, right, for me, I really focus on the brain health bit. Yes. Yeah, that's my area that I'm really driving at. So mm -hmm. I actually help a lot of clients to improve their balance. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, for perception, right? Yes. Uh, so a lot of times is if you have a good balance now when you're young, right? As you age older, right? You will actually have a low incidence of falling, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. So again, right, that points down to sarcopenia, right? So it's really about, you know, injury, palms, bone density. Yeah, all this is got to do with the mobility right so you yeah. target on all ages yeah i do um i do target on all ages uh but my, my current clientele is um professionals right and also mothers yeah a lot of homemakers uh they come to me right and and I'm not a, uh, I'm also not a uh, postpartum specialist right mm -hmm. i mean I, I know a bit in that area like like um especially for women you know like postpartum after they have given birth yes. they also tend to lose strength mm -hmm. right yeah now this is actually very common okay mm -hmm. because when they were pre-pregnant they were already exercising right yeah so it's really during the months when they're pregnant they are not exercising a lot when they yeah. used to be right but not yeah. at all <laughs> <laughs> actually it's important right i mean do like really minimal movement but not carry intensive weight right yes. but you, you still see a lot of women who are like crossfitters they are big and yet they can still lift right because yes. they have already trained right to that mm -hmm. state so they're able to do so but yes. at six weeks right six weeks postpartum right women actually had lost right some of their leg strength right mm -hmm. and also a little yes upper body strength and that's understandable mm -hmm. right yeah so a lot of healthy women who have had an uncomplicated vaginal delivery mm -hmm. typically right 
have the green light to resume physical activity at about right. six weeks, right? And at the 27 weeks, right, women regain most of their leg and upper body strength. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, right, there is no conclusive finding, right, about how long it would take for the women, right, to recover their strength. Yes, but what's it takes important, quite a while. Right, yeah. But what's important, right, is that women resume some form of physical training as soon as they get the green light from the gynae. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Yeah, that so I that's important. Mm. Okay. Thank you so much, Karen. It was really very insightful and great to catch up with you again. Um, I wish you really the best of luck because I, uh, I think since the last we spoke was many years back and then like now we are speaking again and I yes. find that you have grown so much and I've learned so much from you today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me, Sharifa. I've also learned yes. a lot from you. <laughs> so, uh, if let's say they are keen, they can go on your website or maybe buzz you on your Instagram. Yeah, definitely. It's currently.fitness. Uh, mm -hmm. I've got two websites. The one is mm -hmm. currently.fitness and the other mm -hmm. one is coachanywhere.fitness. Mm -hmm. So currently.fitness is all about uh, in-person training. Right. And coachanywhere.fitness mm -hmm. is virtual. Okay, so it's I will post training. it on the, uh, on the link and then uh, they can reach you from there. All right? Yeah, sounds Thank great. Thank you so much. I'll see you Thank again. Thank you. Have a okay, good day. Bye-bye. You. you too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.